Well, if there's an NDP who requires no introduction, it's former leader Ed Broadbent. He lent his name, lent his name to a convention of progressives, which will have its first summit in Ottawa starting tomorrow. Welcome to the show, Ed Broadbent. Good to be back Appreciate here. You having us. All right. Is this, is this platform readiness, election prep talk, or something else entirely? It's longer range than uh, the elections. I mean, the difference between us and any particular political party, including the one that I'm very close to, is that they do work essentially in terms of an election cycle. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to go beyond that in terms of policy and ideas, whether it's on... So it's not NDP. You talk about nonpartisan, but a lot of it's NDP, isn't it? No, it's... Uh, no, to be precise, it's social democratic. It's left of center. And I openly and frankly say it, Mr. Manning is not the Conservative Party. He is a conservative institution. Similarly, we are not the NDP, and we have people coming. A majority aren't members of any party coming, over 500, 500. 60 this panelists, one, right? three international speakers. Um, a majority are not members of any party, but we declare, like the Manning Institute, they're right of center, we're left of center, we're progressive, whether it's on the environment or inequality or jobs. It's that perspective, and if the NDP picks up our ideas, good. In the long, you know, in the longer run, the kinds of things we discuss, or if other parties want to pick them up, they're welcome too. Stephen Harper is going to be paying close attention, I'm sure. Maybe not <laughs> to pick up the ideas, though. <laughs> well, tell me what you're going to use as the measure of success. What do you want to get out of this? When people leave on Sunday, what should they, what should they have experienced? Two kinds of things. One, that they will have made a lot of contacts with each other because a good number have not had any sort of intellectual discussion with each other before, and they're from all parts of the country. And so uh, I, uh, they will have established more contact with each other and broaden the debate in the country. I hope there will be some news coverage, obviously, about the ideas and some concrete policy ideas that some party will pick up. And I suppose the third thing is we do train activists as well, young men and women who, whether at the municipal, provincial or federal level, see an issue. We give training on how to make that issue politically relevant. So. There's some of that training going on this weekend as well. But you're, you're giving a keynote speech, I think, tomorrow. What are you going to be saying? Well, I'm going to... Three themes in the speech, if you like. One is uh, that uh, the economy has to, ha in the future, has to be more equitable, more equal than it has been. Uh, jobs ought to be a priority for, for any government now. We still have unemployment's too high and hopefully well-paying jobs. And third, there has to be here, as there has been in many countries in Western Europe, an integration with, uh, between uh, growth in the economy on one hand and environmental concerns on the other. So greening the economy, making it more just and more jobs. I, I know you can't avoid the election talk. Um, that's starting to rev up as the yes. main topic here. And I, I don't have much time left, but I'm, I'm curious, do you think you have to set a tone going into that? I mean, is it going to be negative? Is it going to have to be that way in order for the NDP in particular to gain seat, more seats to form a, even a minority government? Well, our, our uh, approach is to be positive, to develop po positive ideas for people. But in any political campaign, whether it's Mr. Mulcair and the NDP or other opposition parties, they have to, to some real extent, be negative about the government if they're disagreeing. So whether it's on democratic reform uh, or the environment, there has to be some serious criticism of the, of the government. Uh, and I expect there will be that. But I also expect, especially from a progressive party, to be presenting progressive, positive ideas because people get tired of the acrimony, especially of question period. I used to indulge in it myself, never. but I never watch it now. If, I, if, really? I, if at all possible, I avoid it. And I think most Canadians probably do. Uh, so uh, a party has to have, yes, if you're in opposition, be critical, but also has to have a positive program. And I'm sure the party close to my heart will do that. Well, it's going to be an interesting conference, and uh, that's a big turnout for our first summit. So congratulations on Thank you very much. off and running. I'm sure your name being attached to it gave it a lot of that heft. All right, that's it for Power Play. We're back tomorrow live at this time on CTV News Channel. And